right, all right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Hot Seat Automotive Podcast. Your buddy CJ here talking to you about all things automotive industry, the car guy hobby, automotive enthusiast stuff, cars, 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 and all the things we love talking about as gearheads and as automotive enthusiasts. Everybody's welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I love you guys. I'm so grateful to have you all as part of the channel, my subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, please like and subscribe. Please leave comments. As you guys know, your buddy CJ will make every effort to respond to all of those comments. We've had a lot of great interaction so far. The channel's going great. And I hope you guys are having as much fun as I am. Listen, human beings should only be allowed to have so much fun. But here we are on Hot Seat Automotive Podcast. If you're an automotive enthusiast, if you're a car guy, if you're a car girl, if you're new to this hobby, if you've been involved in this hobby for many, many years, like your buddy CJ has, this is definitely the place for you and for me. You're all welcome here. So let's get right into it, guys. Got a special episode tonight. Uh, what we're going to be talking about is 20 years, 20 years of Dodge V8 Hemi performance coming to an end the end of an era. Uh, we're going to talk about what some of those cars were, you know, sort of that resurgence in the muscle car, the, the new era, the brave new era of muscle cars. Who would have thunk? Who would have thunk? I know I certainly couldn't predict it. Years ago, I didn't see this muscle car resurgence coming. And Dodge, Chrysler Corporation, Stellantis now, they get full credit for really you know, being a just a, an adrenaline shot to our hobby and bringing back that retro styling with all those great cars. I'm talking about the Challenger, the Magnum, the 300, the Charger, all based on that LX platform. That's where it all started. Bringing back the hemispherical engine, the Hemi, high output, high torque, high horsepower engines, bringing back the supercharger, you know, putting the supercharger into production, I should say. Just ridiculous. Ridiculous and how exciting. And it's actually, I say it's been an adrenaline shot. If you think about the past, at least the past 15 years, uh, once it really caught on, and in the past, I'd say five to 10 years, the incredible level of interest, uh, brand new enthusiasts in our hobby, you know, a whole car culture, a subculture, Multiple subcultures really have spun up around the Challenger, the Charger, the Hellcats, the SRTs, um, you know, all of the above, the Scat Pack. So let's talk a bit about where things are at today, the end of that era, perhaps, where it might be going. Is it coming back? Your buddy CJ will tell you what he thinks and kind of what we know about the what's next. So first things first. I want to put this up there. You know, on this channel, we look at these things together. Guys, have no fear. Dodge is here. And maybe you're not on board. You haven't been on board with EVs that have come to market yet. A lot of them look, you know, they have that spherical look. That all the Teslas have that elliptical teardrop shape. Mm, kind of get the impression that that car was designed. You know, I think Elon Musk says he designed the Model S to be the car he would want which I think is kind of interesting. And God knows he's been wildly successful. Hard to argue with success. But I claim as a car guy and as an automotive enthusiast, there is nothing about the Model S in terms of aesthetics, you know, that really talks to my heart and my soul. You know, I think some of the performance specs on those Model S's, the plaids, et cetera, even before the plaid came out, ridiculous performance, acceleration, but so what? You know, yes, that's a that's a cool one trick pony, but I, I say it all the time. I, you know, a car for a car guy, for an automotive enthusiast, the buy has a lot of passion. Uh, it's an emotional buy. It's it's an extension and or reflection of our personalities in many ways. We're we're tied to our cars. We feel a bond with our cars, or we don't. And up to this point, full transparency, I'm not an EV hater. You know, uh, I think, you know, th there's the reality of the market and where things are heading based on legislation and some external pressures on the automotive industry. Uh, you know, the EV revolution is here, but candidly, none of the EV models, whether they're Tesla or any others, have really talked to me as a car guy. 
let's set aside some some cool new developments like the Cybertruck. But look at this thing. Dodge has done it again. And we're going to start talking about this. And maybe some of you are still lukewarm to this thing. Leave me comments. But this is, the, it's a mouthful. You ready? What is this? This is a concept car. Full disclosure, everybody knows this is still a concept car. But here it is. It's a mouthful. I got my notes here. Your buddy CJ always got his notes. Got to be prepared. This is the Dodge Charger Daytona SRT Banshee concept. SRT is not going anywhere. This is an EV all-wheel drive. They're talking about up to 800 volts. Okay. This thing is going to be a two-door. Look, look at the styling. First things first. Let's look at the styling. It's got that retro, cool, throwback, boxy style. That, that this, this, to me, almost looks like a blend between the, the, the new Charger and the new Challenger in many ways. It picks up a lot of those styling cues. That's just what I think. Um, this car, and, and Dodge is going to build this. Like Dodge has a history. We're going to talk about this for fast tracking. Fast tracking from cool prototype to production. Chrysler, Dodge, Delantis, they've done it before. They will do it again. They are doing it with this new uh, Dodge Charger Daytona SRT. It's coming. I don't know when the hot one will be available. There's going to be like two or three different performance levels at least. Um, but something for everybody. couple things. This car, what planet are we on? This car is being touted for having an EV exhaust. Hold up, wait a minute. I thought the EVs, no noise pollution come out of those EVs. And I know over the years, there've been various models. You know, many of the models, if not all, make some sort of noise. They have some sort of audible tone that, you know, going through a speaker or somehow through the drivetrain. This is being touted for having EV exhaust. Okay, and it's going to be, I think they're touting something like 120 decibels. It's going to be as loud as the current Hellcats or as the, as the Hellcats have been. There's going to be a loud EV. Now, again, is that a pose? It's not the rumble of a V8, a V10, a V12. It's just not the same. It's not a screaming, you know, high RPM, twin turbo V6 or a four cylinder all goosed out. It's just not. Okay, it's not a flat six Porsche. It is not going to sound like that. But look at what Dodge is doing. Life gives you lemons, guys. You make lemonade. Dodge has done it before. Dodge will save us. They will do it again. So for those of us, maybe you're in the same boat as CJ here. You look at a Tesla Model S and Model 3. Bleh, not for me, aesthetically. Car does nothing for me. Mustang Mach-E does nothing for me. Okay, styling. A lot of these EVs, they're goofy. They're goofy looking. And look, if it's not talking to me, it's not designed for me, fine, I get it. I get it. it some of these cars have been wildly successful. A Nissan Leaf, not for me. Okay, many of these EVs, I have no desire to own. This thing, look at those retro styling cues. If there's any company that knows how to monetize the market's desire for retro styling, for that muscle car look and feel, even if it's an EV. I know it's not the same. I'm not saying it is. What I'm saying is there, there, this, the significance of this car in concept form, in my opinion, is that it is proving, and it's a bit of a watermark, that there is an EV potentially for everyone. You're a muscle car dude, hardcore. You ain't going to give it up. I get it. Neither am I. As long as I can, I'm going to have fire breathers in my garage. I'm fitting to have, I'm continue to have <laughs> my V8s, my V10s, my V12s, whatever I want in my garage. But I'll tell you what, if I had to go EV, this might be the one I'd get. OK, or if I really were hankering for a EV car that was retro cool, muscle car cool, aesthetically and maybe from a performance standpoint, although different from a fire breathing V8. Look at this thing. OK, this car, here's something else. It will have some form of mechanical shifting, multi-speed drivetrain, multi-speed. I don't think they, they if, if it's some sort of drive axle, I don't claim to be an expert of it. 
that has gearing. I don't know if it's some form of transmission or a combination hybrid drive system. Uh, I shouldn't say hybrid, but through the mechanics, there will be electronics and uh, mechanics, you will be able to shift this vehicle. So again, it's not like your typical EV that we currently face, these performance EVs, where they're basically, let's be blunt, they're like golf carts. You get in, you hit the button to turn the key, you, you push the gas, but it's not gas, CJ. You push, you push the, the pedal and it goes and it just kind of zips along like a high performance vacuum cleaner. I mean, seriously, I'm talking car guy stuff. I'm not throwing shade. I'm being funny, but there's truth in this. This is how car guys look at this stuff. Many of us, I speak for myself. Not so with this car. It's going to have the performance. It's going to have the styling. It's going to have cues and, and design elements that are made to entice what Dodge has had as an extremely valuable and lucrative following. Okay. Did you know? Now let's get well, let's get into the history. Uh, and I claim Dodge is going to do it again. They're going to do it different ways. And then I'm going to make a prediction. And I've said it before. There will be a second chapter to this. Get ready for the return. I do believe the V8s will be back. Bold prediction. Factory shutting down, retooling. I know. But guys, I'm going to tell you what. There is, I firmly believe that General Motors, Stellantis, Dodge, Chevy, Ford, others will bring back performance internal combustion engines. Okay, there's no way we're going 60, 70, 80% EV in our lifetimes. I just don't see it, but that's my prediction. What do you guys think? Leave your comments. Love to see them, love to hear them, and I'll respond to them. But guys, let's go back in time. I want to talk about this. I want to talk about the history of Dodge, and I want to celebrate it a bit tonight in terms of what Dodge and Chrysler have done to bring us incredibly cool cars at a time when we didn't think we would have anything like this. Dodge Viper. Are you kidding me? Look at this thing. The significance of this car. Was it 91, 92 when they came out? I think they were at least released in 91, uh, maybe in prototype form or an early limited distribution, but certainly 92. They had a run. They had runs from 92 to 2017. They had a break in there and then it came back. But the Dodge Viper with that V10 to build a car like this, a track monster, okay, at a time when nobody was building anything like that. Dodge not only built the prototype, they found a way. And it's a fascinating story. It is a fascinating story of how this car came to be. Just the fact that, that Chrysler Corporation at Dodge was able to pull that off was incredible. Okay? And if you don't know the full history of the Viper, check it out. But again, what I want to show you is, and your buddy CJ says this all the time, there's nothing new under the sun. You don't have to go back very far in the history of the automotive industry to know that Dodge has always been a leader and an innovator in keeping the automotive enthusiast hobby alive with really cool, high-performance cars that bucked the trend of what was going on in the market. Dodge has always bucked the trend. They haven't been shy about it. By bringing cars to market that many of us did not see coming and that the industry didn't see coming. And in the face of adversity, challenge, and barriers, Dodge smashed its way through it. They have a history of doing that to bring us cars like the Dodge Viper, a dream car for those of us who came out of the 80s and into the 90s as enthusiasts. Who would have thunk there would ever be a car built like this again? And then they canceled it. And I, I think it was, you know, maybe 2013 or so when they started making them again. Up to 2017, they brought it back for incredible examples. And the car actually reached super high performance, ultra super high performance in its final versions, the ACR, so on and so forth. So don't you ever doubt Dodge's ability to wow us and to shock us and surprise us and to thrill us as automotive enthusiasts. So there is a history to this. Let's keep going because this is fun. This is more fun than car guys should be allowed to have. 
during the week, right now, right now, because this is what we love talking about. And I hope you guys love talking about it as much as I do. <laughs> but this is what we do on this channel. We talk cars. We talk cars. And guys, if you're talking about Chrysler Corporation, if you're talking about their history of disruption and innovation and bringing cool cars to the market that completely go against the grain, that completely have a retro vibe and tap into a market that many, many had blind spots to in the automotive industry, look at this thing. Plymouth Prowler. Ultimately, it became the Chrysler Prowler. Uh, this was a car that pr was produced 1997 through 2003, fairly limited quantities. There wasn't huge uptake on these cars. Now, I will tell you, I've, I've, I've been a fan of this car for many years since it came out. I have not pulled the trigger to buy one. I think there were some fatal flaws to this car as a car guy. I think they're cool. Okay, I've seriously considered buying one of these just because I think it's so ridiculous. These cars are so ridiculous. The fact that this was ever built and mass produced, I think they built somewhere around 11, 12,000 of these cars total. So not a huge run, but the fact that this was produced by Chrysler Corporation, originally as a Plymouth, then as a Chrysler, for, for wide distribution and sales, absolutely ridiculous. The thing that should never have happened was this Plymouth Prowler, yet it happened. Again, don't you ever underestimate Chrysler and Dodge. Now, the fatal flaws with this, the drivetrain, let's talk about it. Pretty innovative things in terms of that drive axle, so on and so forth, if you look into the drivetrain, but a lot of the drivetrain components were shared with other, you know, you use the term parts bin, but there was platform here, you know, the drivetrain, the engine, uh, out of other cars, including, I think, minivans. You hear people throwing shade at it for that. I don't hate it for that, but I do think not having a, any sort of V8 in this car was a turnoff to potential buyers. I think a lot of the guys who would have bought these, if it had a V8, the minute they heard V6, you got to go back in time. When this came out, and again, this was kind of ahead of its time, as much as of a retro car as it is, it was also ahead of its time because they went with a V6 drivetrain. Now, there's nothing wrong with it. This car was never intended to be a high-performance track machine or anything like that. But, you know, that V6 was plenty of power for cruising around. People say, you know, sometimes the first couple of years were a bit underpowered. There are, you know, bolt-ons and mods you can do to, to get a little bit more out of them. But it was never intended to be uh, a record-setting car. This was always intended to be, you know, a cool street machine, a cool, you know, a cool street cruiser. They're about as impractical as a car could be, but that's not why you buy it. They had a trailer available. Who sells a car with a trailer? Who did that? Chrysler did it. Look at the color. Look at the wheels. Look at the front bumper. Okay? Look at the rubber in the back. Look at those wide tires, those, those deep dish wheels. Everything about this car, just ridiculous. It never should have been built, but it was. And who built it? Chrysler. So again, I give you another example of why you can never count out Dodge, Chrysler Corporation, Stellantis. Don't bet against them. Let's look at another example here. Okay, now, this is controversial. Your buddy CJ is not shy about getting controversial. That's why you love me. Come on, admit it. <laughs> Guys, we're having fun. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. What is this? This is a Chrysler PT Cruiser. This is an important car. Hear me out, guys, because this can be controversial. I always kind of, well, to say I judge is probably the wrong term, but I can tell a lot about an automotive enthusiast when we talk about the PT Cruiser, if they ultimately scoff and laugh and say, oh, it's a soccer mom car. Oh, it's a nerd car. It's a clown car. Yeah, you might be right about all that, but you don't know much about the automotive industry in the early 2000s if you don't know the significance of this PT Cruiser when it came out. I have friends who shall remain nameless, who ran out and bought these cars, especially the GT version, the turbo version, whatever it was, I believe there was a manual, because it was so retro cool and they had young kids at the time. 
and you were able to cruise, you know, say cruise to the grocery store and then go right to the car show. Go ahead and laugh at that, but it's true. This car, Chrysler, was ahead of the curve with this retro styling craze that came out. You know what I'm talking about, early to mid 2000s. This car with the, the 1930s panel van, vintage truck styling, everything about this vehicle, that raked stance that it had, okay? Another vehicle that you say in the 2000s when everything was, was heading in another direction, that modern look, you know, looking like every other car with the curvy shape, everything's starting to look, look the same. It's not like the 70s, 80s, and, and let's say the early 90s when cars still kind of look unique, going into the early 2000s to mid 2000s, everything started to look the same. They all started to look like ellipses. They all started to look like teardrop shaped cars, didn't they? Everything that we loved as individuals and were passionate about as your automotive enthusiast car buyer was disappearing. Enter the PT Cruiser. If you were a guy, a younger dad, who had to get something practical, to put car seats in, to go to soccer games, for your wife to cruise around in, okay? Go get groceries, take the kids to school, but you also wanted a bit of a statement. You weren't gonna go out, you know, maybe you weren't a guy who could go out and afford a six-figure car at the time, you know? This is, was a practical, reasonably priced vehicle that had retro cool styling and you can't argue with numbers, or maybe you can. Numbers don't always tell the story. But did you know they made a million of these? Actually, I think it's more than a million. Your buddy CJ is here to tell you. Laugh at the PT Cruiser. It was Motor Trend Car of the Year, I believe. Don't quote me on that. Or Car and Driver Car of the Year, something like that. This vehicle had a following. This vehicle was hot. And if you don't think this vehicle is hot, you weren't there, or you don't know the history. Because it was, I'm telling you. Now, history has not been nice to the PT Cruiser. This thing's goofy. You are not cool showing up at the car show with a PT Cruiser. Sorry. That's your buddy CJ's opinion. A lot of you people may be into this. I've seen them with flames on them. I've seen them with wheels and body kits and wraps and every other thing. You can do some things. But thus far, yeah, they're, they're considered kind of a clown car now. I know. But that wasn't always the case. And again, another vehicle that you probably never thought would have gotten built with that styling. Chrysler did it. Starting to see this, the, uh, the history here. All right. Let's talk now about our hero cars. I want to talk about some hero cars. All right, guys. Chrysler 300. Now we're talking. You go back 2004, 2005. When Chrysler Corporation bought out the LX platform, return of the Hemi, okay, you're looking at a Chrysler 300 here, SRT8. This SRT8 badge was really the genesis of a whole new era of muscle car performance. The significance of what Chrysler and Dodge did here cannot be overstated. You can give full credit to Dodge and Chrysler for bringing back or reinvigorating the muscle car hobby for a whole new generation and a whole new era. I thought these were retro cool and we'll get to the other hero cars. I call them hero cars because of the significance, not because they're my favorite cars, but you gotta give props where props is due. The significance of this platform, of this vehicle in our hobby cannot be overstated. Because on the heels of the 300, what came next? Are you kidding me? You talk about sleeper. Can we just talk about this car for a minute? Guys, I'm going to go out on a limb here tonight. Are you ready? And I don't care who I offend. <laughs> and I don't care who, who considers this controversial. But what we're looking at here is a Dodge Magnum SRT. This is the ultimate sleeper of our times, the ultimate wagon, the ultimate grocery getter. Come on, guys. How cool was this car? Another car that should never have been built. 
Logic tells you this car in this trim should never have been built. This was the era, the new era of the SUV. Minivans and SUVs taken over the world and leave it to Dodge, not only to bring back the Hemi, okay? Not only to bring back a performance trim package in the SRT8 SRT, but they put it in a station wagon. They put it in a grocery getter. A station wagon that can smoke Corvettes. Are you kidding me? Don't underestimate Dodge. Another example, all hail Dodge. If you're a muscle car guy, you might be a Ford guy. You might be a Chevy guy. You might be Pontiac. You might fill in the blank. You might be an import guy. But if you're an automotive enthusiast, you have to express gratitude for what Dodge did for our hobby. Again, it's like an adrenaline shot in an era in the 2000s when nobody was doing anything cool or innovative from a retro styling standpoint. And it seemed like things were heading in a certain direction. Everything looking kind of curvy and you can't tell it apart in terms of designs. Not so for this Dodge line. And these cars, they stopped making them after a couple few years, you know, uh, depending on who you ask and, and, and what, what you read. In order to make room for what was to come next, my last couple of entries in the hero cars, if you will, from Dodge, they had to whack the Magnum. But shout out to Dodge for ever even conceiving and building something like this for us. And if you can snag one of these, always, this will always be a retro cool sleeper at any car meet in any car show you go to. Dodge Magnum SRT. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me, guys? All right. Now, let's look at this thing. We're going to look at this one together. So we talked about... The Chrysler 300, we talked about the Magnum. What about the Charger? Dodge brought back the Charger brand, the name, on the LX platform, offered it with the Hemi and the SRT8 badging. Uh, this is a Super B here, an early Super B on the LX platform. Incredibly cool car. This was the first time, I believe, the Dodge Charger actually became a four-door. This ended up being a really smart move by Dodge, wasn't it? They've sold a lot of these cars. The demand has been fairly consistent, not as significant as what I'm about to show you, because I think the ultimate Dodge muscle car hero car is about to be unveiled by your buddy CJ. This car, again, for someone who needed the practicality of a sedan, wanted to still be able to go to car shows, enjoy the hobby, was wishing they could have a reasonably reliable, cool muscle car, couldn't get by with a Mustang, couldn't get by with a Corvette because you needed more space in the back, enter the Dodge Charger. Get it, you know, you could get an SRT. You could get the Super B trim, okay? Ultimately, you could, you know, step up to the Hellcats, which came much later, okay? But wow, are you kidding me? The significance of the Dodge Charger. Now, next, guys, we got to do this. We got to look at this together because I claim this car is the most important muscle car to come out of Detroit in the past 20 years. I'll say it again. The Dodge Challenger is the most important muscle car to be produced out of Detroit. American car manufacturers in the past 20 years. You almost can't argue that, guys. You just can't. They built somewhere on the order of 800,000 of these. This is the ultimate Dodge hero car that brought back the muscle car era. I have no problem calling this a hero car. Now, truth be told, your buddy CJ owned one of these. I owned, it was a 2012 SRT. I bought it brand new. There were things I did not love about that car. These cars did not have and do not have great visibility out the back. Now, the later ones do have blind spot detection. And again, I've driven 100 cars and I've owned many. I have a couple of cars right now that don't have great visibility out the back. But this car in particular, the blind spot could really sneak up on you. You had to get used to it. You had to be a good driver to drive one of these, in my opinion, in order to avoid that blind spot 
snagging you. And it could snag you. Okay, these cars are big and powerful. Hello, is this 1973? No. They reintroduced the Challenger, this car, with the Hemi in 2008. This car, when they initially bought it back, I believe 6.1 liter, 425 horsepower, the V8 Hemi. Okay, and then at the end of the run with the Challenger SRT Demon 170, leave it to Dodge. I believe that's north of 1,000 horsepower. It's like 1,025 horsepower or something. Think about that. Now, this car, who would have thought? Any one of us who were actually in the hobby at that time, 2007, 2008, 2009, when this car hit the streets, we all lost our minds and said it was the coolest thing to come out of Detroit in years. We all did. But I'll be honest with you, your buddy CJ always keeping it real, real talk. I will tell you, I did not see, I didn't foresee what was to come around the incredible, so I, I say there's almost a subculture dedicated to these modern Hemis, dedicated to the Challengers and the Chargers, the Hellcats, the SRTs, Scat Packs, Red Eyes, Jailbreak, Super Bs. There's so many, right? All of the above. Um, you know, the incredible demand, the following, the clubs that have sprouted up around these, okay? The presence of these at car shows, car meets, at the track events, whether it's the quarter mile or the, the round tracks, the road courses, a whole generation of automotive enthusiasts, a whole new generation got into this hobby because of this car. And this has become their vehicle of choice. They are loyal to it. And then earlier generations of automotive enthusiasts who maybe first time around, their first car was a 1970s or 1960s, you know, Dodge Charger, Dodge Challenger, whatever, Super B, going back in the day, old Plymouths and all those things, the Cudas. If you want some, wanted something modern, you could get it. You could go to the dealership and get one of these 400, 500, 600, 700 horsepower, buy it off the lot with a full warranty, drive the wheels off it, do road trips, go to the grocery store, go to the airport with it, <laughs> oil change, gas, filters, tires, take it to the car show. Like, absolutely. So the significance of this car can't be overstated. The Dodge Challenger has a massive following. And if you don't believe me, if you don't believe your buddy, CJ, go to any car show, any car meet in your town, and you will see these cars. And you will see guys that are extremely loyal to them. You know, it's not just daily transportation for them. There is a passion to these cars. And this is a car that didn't exist 20 years ago. We're not talking about the Camaro badge or the Mustang badge the Corvette badge, or the Porsche 911 brand that's been around for 100 years, <laughs> or at least 50 or 60. These modern era challengers specifically and chargers, not, you know, the people who really are most passionate about these cars are not, are not necessarily the old heads who were into the 60s, 70s cars. A lot of them are not. They're into these cars, okay? And they didn't get into the hobby to someday aspire to a 1960s or 1970s Plymouth, Dodge, or Chrysler. No, they got into the hobby because of this car. 2008 through 2020, 23, they wanted the Challenger. They wanted the Hellcat. They wanted the Scat. They wanted the Red Eye. They wanted the SRT. They didn't want that old metal. That's a different thing. That's a different vibe. This car influenced and attracted a whole new generation and sparked a whole new era, a whole new chapter for muscle car enthusiasts. How exciting and incredible. So we've got to take a moment to acknowledge that, maybe to shed a tear, okay? To salute Dodge, Chrysler, Stellantis for all that they gave us in the past 20 years. And also, guys, I got to tell you, let's get excited for what's next. Maybe it's not for you. Let's go back and, 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 and end this episode exactly where we started. Let's take a look. And again, it's a mouthful, 
the Dodge Charger Daytona SRT Banshee concept car. Up to 800 volts, <laughs> all-wheel drive, high performance. It's going to have EV exhaust. I know I'm not sold on it yet. I cringe a little. I cringe a little when I think about a speaker giving me exhaust note. But guys, you know, how do you keep a wave upon the sand? How do you stem the tide? EVs are coming. You know, whether or not we'll have 50, 60, 70% adoption in our lifetime, I don't know. But what I tell, will tell you is a lot of those options for the time being are going away around those big muscle V8s. I think some of them are going to be coming back. Write it down. Your buddy CJ said it. But in the interim, here's an EV even you and I can get excited about. Let me know in the comments what you think about this Dodge Charger Daytona EV. Okay. And the last thing I want to say, just sort of one more time, is guys, don't ever count out Dodge, Chrysler, now Stellantis. All those incredible cars they gave us over the years that nobody saw coming. Dodge, Chrysler has always, you know, they've always bucked the trend, particularly over the past 20 to 30 years. They brought us cars as automotive enthusiasts that were super impactful. Even if you're not a Chrysler, Stellantis, or Dodge fan, you have to acknowledge they got it done. Dodge brought vehicles to the market at times when it seemed like all hope was lost for our hobby, for muscle cars, for performance cars, for retro cool cars. They brought it back. So let's not count them out. Let's try to get excited about it. Maybe it's not your jam yet. Maybe it will be. Maybe it never will be. But hey, an EV that even you and I could get excited about. This Dodge Charger Daytona SRT. But again, let's take a moment to acknowledge and appreciate all that Dodge and Chrysler brought to us with the, the modern muscle car era, the Hemi. Guys, those are just a few of my thoughts this evening. Uh, I'd love to know what you think. Please give me a like and subscribe. Leave me some comments. I'll respond to all the comments I, I can. Your buddy CJ signing out for this episode of Hot Seat Automotive Podcast. I'll see you on the next one. Love you. Peace.